Welcome back class, I am Mr. Betts and this is Meme 3 in which we go over an important historical topic that you're gonna need to know using the internet's greatest resource, meme videos and other funny clips. Today's topic, Benedict Arnold. There are few betrayals in history more infamous than that of Benedict Arnold. Perhaps um, Brutus or uh, who's that other guy? I brought you frankincense. Thank you. And I brought you myrrh. Thank you. Murder. <gasps> Judas. It's hard to believe that at one point, the man who has become synonymous with treason was actually the best American officer in the Revolutionary War. I don't well, think you're, you're respecting. Run. You're disrespecting a future U.S. Army soldier. When fighting broke out at Lexington and Concord, Arnold was ready to kick some British bum. He and a company of men flew like a bird up to the British fort of Ticonderoga. Which he took, but of course credit went to Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys. Whatever, Benedict, you know what you did. It doesn't matter, you gotta shake it off, bro. You got bigger plans, man. You have to invade Canada. Yeah, the Patriots tried to invade Canada and make it the 14th state during the revolution. And despite the fact that this ultimately failed and old Benedict was shot in the leg, he always stayed in the fight. Bang on tear? Put it reverse, tear? Put it reverse! Oh Lord! Lord save! Oh Lord! Oh save! What the what, what you doing, tear? <laughs> Cut to Lake Champlain where Arnold was put in charge of the American Navy, which was really a collection of schooners and rowboats and dinghies. And in October of 76, when they went up against 22 British gunboats, well, the result was not pretty. Underwater? Yeah. But they were able to hold off the British advance long enough to reinforce American fortifications. And despite all of these accomplishments and even being well liked by George Washington, when it came to being promoted, Arnold's superiors were like, Wait a minute, who are you? Then the following October, Arnold found himself under the command of General Horatio Gates. And because of some previous beef and also Arnold's attitude, Gates actually grounded Arnold, confining him to his tent. Come on guys, work together. we're trying to win a war here. No, why are you fighting? Don't fight each other! Arnold, he didn't care. He went on the battlefield anyway and led the Americans to victory at Saratoga. This was the victory that convinced the French to join the war on our side. Oh yeah, and he also had like this fist-sized chunk of his leg blown off. Mother trucker, dude. That hurt like a butt cheek on a stick. Watch your profanity. Honestly, it was so bad that doctors just tried to reassemble his limb into something leg-shaped, the result of which was two inches shorter than the other one. When your legs don't work like they used to before. So how did Benedict Arnold become the biggest turncoat in American history? Well, a lot of it has to do with the fact that he was constantly overlooked in terms of promotion and appreciation. I mean, this man gave his life, his wealth, his leg to the cause, and all he wanted was a little bit of this. Thank you for your service. Part of it also had to do with the fact that Arnold was firmly a Washington boy surrounded by a lot of people that wanted Horatio Gates to become commander in chief. Ironically, Arnold's loyalty as well as some of his shady dealings made him the target of smear campaigns. Haha, ha, you need a diaper. I want to tell everybody what your pants. And of course there's Peggy Shipping, the teenage loyalist that the 37 year old Arnold fell in love with. While serving as Commandant of the City of Philadelphia, Arnold saw and instantly fell in love with Peggy. Do we have any of his smooth lines? Trying to pick her up and saying, girl, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Well, it must have worked because before you knew it, the two were married, but the only problem was Peggy came from high society and Arnold, he was flat broke and it's no fun being the only one that can't afford to have fun at the party. <laughs> So when a deal was offered by Peggy's British ex-boyfriend, John Andre of all people, to turn on the Patriots for 10,000 pounds, Arnold had to look into his soul. Could he really do it? Could he really switch sides? Wanna see my impression of a British driver? All right. Uh, 
yeah, he could. He began feeding Andre the location of American troops, supplies. He even started conspiring to surrender his new command at West Point. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. That was until Andre was captured by American troops with information for British General Clinton and a travel pass signed by Benedict Arnold. When Benedict found out, he knew the jig was up and immediately defected to the British. Try and pull me over now, cop! <laughs> The British did pay Arnold well for his treachery, but they never gave him any important military commands because, well, they never trusted him. He uh, spent out the rest of his days in London and Canada trying to establish himself as a merchant or more appropriately, a trader. But maybe in hindsight, it was all for the best, because even knowing the Americans lost this innovative, genius military thinker, they gained this treacherous figure to rally against in their quest for freedom. You fool, I'm glad we got our independence. Can you imagine me British? Uh, Eating tea and dunking crumpers? Wait. Well, that's the meme story of Benedict Arnold, but I want to know what you think. Does he deserve every ounce of that hated status he has? Or can you kind of see where he was coming from? Let me know down in the comments. And I want to give a big shout out to all my new Patreon patrons this month. You can become one by clicking down here. And if you like this video, click that button that lets me know. Leave a comment down below and make sure you subscribe because it's a long school year. Year, but we're gonna get through it together. Be safe, and I'll see you next time.